All right, Floyd, uh, you know, thanks for talking to us today. Um, uh, what, can I ask you what you're in? What are you in here for, Floyd? Uh, possession of controlled substance. Okay. And then, how long have you been in now? Uh, five and a half years. A little over five years. Okay. Uh, we were at your parole hearing the other day, and you're granted parole. Uh, what happens now? Do you know? Uh, I get out. Hopefully, pretty soon. Can you talk about? I mean, how long? I mean, is there a process? Do you have to fill out forms, answer questions? What kind of things do you do now that the the uh, board has granted you parole? <laughs> This is the first time, right, for you? Yes. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, a lot of paperwork. Um, I only imagine this is going to get a lot easier from here on out. Okay. Um, so what does happen when you get out? Uh, I mean, lots of things, you know. Um, I got to find a job, follow up with uh, counseling, Learn how to be a father, yeah. all other good stuff. What uh, what kind of job do you want? An easy one. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Um, now let's talk about that parole. It seems to be a lot of conditions of parole, doesn't it? Yes, it's. Can you talk about that? I mean, is it uh, you know how does that feel to to have all these things you have to do once you get out? It's hard, but I think I have a an obligation as a son and a father to put forth the effort, you know, to show that I care. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how long did you have on your sentence? Uh, I, <laughs> I have uh, six years total and I have like 290 days left. So it was pretty much of a shock when they gave me the parole hearing and actually gave me the date because I only have so much time left. So you have six years, but you had 100, 290 days? Uh, you mean, is that? 290 days left at top. So, so you could have then just waited another, what, 10 months or so and just, and just nine walked and out? Half, like nine and a half months. Why, why did you decide to uh, uh, apply for parole, knowing that there's so many conditions of parole? I think it's uh, mostly for the stability of, you know, it's just not just let me out. I got to you know, go forth with your counseling and whatnot. State helps you with that, so it gives me what I need, like the tools and stuff. You felt, you, did you feel like that, uh, that if you got out on your own, that, that maybe all the programs that they could offer you would, uh, wouldn't be there for you, and so maybe it's better for you to get out with this strict uh, parole guideline? I think there's an upside to both getting out with no strings attached and getting out with, you know, the structure and whatnot. Now, I noticed you had a bunch of uh, people behind uh, you when you were appeared at the parole hearing there for your support. Do yeah. you, is that another reason to get out early and to, to Most be Most definitely. Tell me about that. What, what is it that you're anxious to get out and see and do? Well, I've, a lot has changed since I've been down, so as far as family-wise and whatnot. I just barely had a son before I fell, so it's gonna be different. It's gonna be much harder because I have to learn how to be a father, learn how to reintegrate back into society, get a job in this tough economy, all that other good stuff. Do you worry about not living up to the conditions of the parole and then being ushered right back in here? Almost definitely. It's a gamble because I have, I have to, impress the parole board or whatnot and on top of that I'm in a way doubling my time just in case of like you know I violate or whatnot nothing's for certain so it's a gamble so I'm willing to take it I'm willing to step up to the plate they talked about friends is a big uh, thing reissuing yourself uh, reacquainting yourself with your old friends maybe that uh, did you have some friends that, that you might not see this time just because uh, you, you want to stay on the straight and narrow track? Well, I think the biggest thing is, uh, you know, not consuming all the evil that's around me. You know, getting out with the concept of uh, not being a product of my environment, but rather making my environment a product of me. So I think I'll be able to, I think I'll do good. Sounds like you've learned some things in here. Do they have some programs that you've, uh, classes that you've attended to kind of give you these uh, uh, 
uh, skills or what, what did they give you here? Um, a lot of time to think. <laughs> I haven't really did any classes since I've been down. I did a lot of classes before I fell. Um, but I don't really think that matters, you know. It's going to be tough either way. Have you been in here before? No. This is your first time? Yeah. Was it quite a shock? To it's kind of a, it's a, you know, it's a change. I mean, you got to learn how to behave and whatnot. Now, the, the Parole Commission was talking about that they have, the state of Idaho has mandatory programs for you to, to uh, finish while, you know, when you get out. Have you talked to other inmates uh, that maybe have come from other states that don't have this kind of support or programs, especially when it talks about parole, maybe that, where they just are granted parole without any help? I mean, you hear a lot of stuff from people who come out of state. Uh, you know, it's just hearsay most of it, you know. You hear other states have these programs and they, they release you on your parole date. It's been like three years since my last, I was eligible for parole and this is the first time I even applied for it. Wanted to get some time down just in case, you know. Why did you wait? Um, mostly it was just a lot easier just to get it out of the way. It's, you know, it's gonna be hard either way, but I kind of took the tougher road. Which was what? Like, what was that tougher road? Doing the time, being away from my family for so long, having them support me while I've been down. So. As you've communicated with your family, you know, how, does, how has it affected them? You being it's, in here? it's tough. I mean, I haven't seen my son since I've been down. It's been, uh, it's been tough. My family, they come and see me a couple times a year, whatnot. I understand. They have to work and whatnot. It mm -hmm. Helps support me. Kind of a bad son, so. Yeah. Do you feel like you're a better son now? I feel like I can be. I've grown up a lot in here, unfortunately. So. Yeah. Uh, what would have happened? How would you have felt if the parole commission denied your? Um, I just had to go in the parole, in front of the parole commission and be positive about the whole situation. Either way, you know, I had to take it as a positive. Yeah, in, fa and in fact, you said there that, that he, no matter what, I, if I remember right, as we were listening to your hearing, you said that, that you weren't going to let this affect you either way, the decision. Is that right? Yes. That you're going to try to keep it positive? Why, why do you have that kind of uh, feeling? Um, I just do. <laughs> Can't really explain. I have a lot of time to think back here. I could either make the worst of it, make my time a lot harder, or I could just, you know, not. Yeah. Do you think that uh, hearing was fair? For the most part. Anything that you uh, were concerned about or felt like? Oh, uh, I was mostly concerned about just what, you know, people read in papers or whatnot. You know, most of it ain't true. It's just, I think, hearsay or whatnot. They only go what they, they read sometimes, so. Yeah, because they do get a big stack of, uh, of literature. I mean, did you have other interviews before that? Other people that kind of uh, talked to you and then had their assessments that then they give to the parole commission to read and to understand? I mean, tell me about that process. You, you say that maybe not everything that they read was, was right? Well, first it started off with the pre-sentence investigation and uh, they interview certain people, such as probation officers, past counselors, or whatnot. Um, then they go off on that, and I feel basically their job is just to say no to everything. I mean, just from my point of view, but they have their reasons, I guess. But I don't know. It just keeps going on and on down the line. So all in all, now you're, you're on your way out, you're filling out the paperwork to get out. Um, you know, uh, you're gonna make a go at this? Definitely.